Hello, how are you? I've got a message for you today. And it's just like life is, is challenging me. You, hey, motivator, you got the Cancer Center Award of Excellence for Perseverance. Persevere this. <laughs> you bad. <laughs> I want to share something with you. I want to tell you why I'm sharing it too. Every report that I get from Cancer Centers of America, they, they give me a good report. But this time, because I took a hit, they said, Mr. Brown, yes, your army has been weakened. What do you mean? Your white blood cells have been reduced. Ladies and gentlemen, stress. Stress will take you out. There's some people that you need to love with a long arm. Did you hear me? I don't have the mental bandwidth to deal with somebody who has a mental illness and all they have to do is take their medication and they choose not to. And you make choices. And those choices will produce consequences. I'm not going to be an enabler. In order for me to be here to continue to persevere and kick cancer's butt, I have to be intentional of zero tolerance for drama. I must deal with things that bring me peace things that empower me, things that make me feel good, things that gives my life a sense of purpose and meaning. And I'm not going to throw away the time that I have left fooling around with someone who's not serious about living a, a normal life. I don't have the mental bandwidth. With all the stuff that's going on now, and even if I had it, I wouldn't make it available for someone who does not want to participate in their own rescue. Remember that movie, Help Me to Help You. And so I know that there are parents and, and, and it's we, we know no matter how old your children become, they're still your children. And I want you to make a note of this. Just because they're your children, just because they came from you, does not mean they are of you. Come on, that'll preach. You're not of you. We had an agreement. Take your medication. Get your rest. Get your therapy. And you can be an asset to yourself and to your son and to the world. I chose not to do that. And that's okay. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. How, how many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you know people in your life, family members and friends, who are hell bent on doing the wrong thing. How many of you know some people like that? They're just hell bent on doing the wrong thing. Burning bridges. Well, this time he didn't burn the bridge. 
He had a backpack. He blew that sucker up. <laughs> he brought some dynamite. He said, I ain't going to burn the bridge with you. I'm going to blow this bridge up. <laughs> How many have ever had that kind of experience? It might have been with a, a significant other. It might have been with a, a, a relative or a, a grown child. Or it, it, it might have been a situation where you have been in that place so many times with them that you are in that place where Fannie Lou Hamer said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I ain't playing with you. I ain't got time for this. And so I know somebody can use this. So this is real time what I'm dealing with. And I'm, I'm sharing with you what I have learned. That you don't give up on them. You give them up to God. Just because they came through you does not mean that they are of you or for you. No. No. Face it. And I'm focusing my time and energy, and I hope you do too. One taking care of me. Something happened to me right now. He's not going to do anything for me. He's not responsible enough to do something for himself. Oh, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was out of my mind. Oh, is you didn't take your medication, so you were out of your mind. Surprise! And you're going to turn on me? You're going to turn on me? Who everybody said, don't do that. And I made a decision from a place of love, from a father. You're going to turn on me? You're going to bite the hand that help you? How many of you know people like that? That they are, and you have to, it, it's hard to take in, I, I understand, to realize that some people, and it's hard for you to identify with it because you're not like that. You can't think like they think because you have to be out of your mind. But there's some people who don't have a conscience. There's some people that are heartless. They're heartless. There are some people who live their lives. You know, there's a, a, a product called Beyond Meat. There are some people who live their lives beyond stupid. <laughs> Come on. You know, some people who live beyond stupid. They do some stupid things. And you ask, what were you thinking? What were they thinking? They weren't thinking. A couple who bought their son a gun and they had all kind of warnings about it, this boy. And he put online, I got a beauty, and then go to school and kill four people. And rather than turn themselves in, they, they try and run in the same car, take $4,000 out of the bank. Where did they think they were going? <laughs> Come on! Beyond stupid. During these times, when people are going through all types of stuff, I wouldn't even blow my horn at somebody who, who just did not move in front of me. Why? They might be beyond stupid and get out and shoot me. 
if a policeman pulled me aside, I would get my driver's license and title out and put it on the dashboard and put both hands on the steering wheel and say, sir, I mean you no harm. I want to go home just like you. Please don't kill me because of my paint job. Please, sir. Please. I beg you. Why would you do that? People who don't do that are beyond stupid. Somebody got a gun, got backup, got their dream job, a Klansman and a white supremacist dream job where they can be judge, jury, and executioner. And they might have been chewing some chewing gum and bit their tongue inadvertently and say, somebody's going to pay for this today. I would be beyond stupid if I don't have my driver's license and my title on the dashboard right near the window. Show me your license. And um, give it to me. No, no, sir, it's right there on the dashboard. It's in your reach, sir. I'm keeping my hand on this stern wheel, sir. I don't, I don't want you to kill me saying I, I, I thought he was reaching for a gun. I felt my life was in danger. Why? Because I don't want to die like that. I'm going to be cooperative. I will say, yes, sir, no, sir. You can call me a Tom or whatever you want to say. But I'm going to be cooperative. Why? I know if he kills me, there are no consequences. He has absolute power, and he knows it, or she knows it. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so... I've given, forgiven my son so many times. And I want you to, to write this down. God, your heart. He had absolute power over my heart until I came to myself. And I asked myself, you but create an environment for yourself. And I'm asking all of you, Create an environment for yourself. There are some people I know who have a lock on their door in their house. They don't feel safe with their children being in the house. Homie ain't living like that. He can't come back up in here. He had dynamite in his backpack. and He didn't burn the bridge. He threw some gasoline on it, but he blew it up. I said, okay, Stevie Wonder can see what this is up in here, up in here. You ain't going to make me lose my mind. Mm-mm. No. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. I'm encouraging you. Be intentional about creating peace in your life. Be intentional about limiting the access that people who create unnecessary drama, be it your children, your cousins, your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, or friends, be intentional of limiting the access they have to you. That calls I don't take. If it's not positive, if it's not purposeful, if it's not in alignment with what I'm doing, if it's not profitable, I ain't taking that call. And life is serious. And you have to be serious about taking care of your health, of your mental state. Because stress, I know this personally. When they gave me the award 
of, of perseverance from the cancer centers of America. How could you be here 29 years later, fourth stage cancer conqueror? Because I was intentional about maintaining a peaceful state of mind. I was talking to a guy yesterday that one of my speakers called me about, and, and he's dealing with cancers, PSA, which stands for prostate specific antigen, is 18. I said, listen to me, brother. I know a little bit about this. My PSA was as high as 2,400. You got to ask yourself, how did I end up here? There's a saying that I believe in. Wherever you find yourself, at some point in time, you made an appointment to be there. I knew who he was when I opened my door and most importantly, opened my heart. I knew and I erred on the side of love, being a father. And he spit in my face. Puh. You knew who I was when you opened your heart. I want you to get a pen and write this down and put it up somewhere where you can read it. It's better to have a good friend or some good friends than to have a bad relative or bad relatives. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Some people, some relatives, some of your children, if you never saw them again, it would be too soon. Oh, behave. Hello? Woo! <laughs> Come on, Les. I know it's not easy, and I shared some tears. I'm human. But you ain't getting in my heart no more. Been there, done that, bought the T-shirt. God gave me a voice and a story to speak and to help people, to see things. And you know in your heart of hearts what I'm saying, you already know it. So I want to liberate you from guilt. Lord, deliver me from myself. I, but when, when Donald Lawrence, he wrote that, that was a download from God. Lord, deliver me from myself. I ain't doing this no more. I know he's going to be back because the money that he took from me, he's going to burn through it real soon. Mm. Oh, yeah. He's going to burn through it real soon. You try and come back up in here. Mm. And I don't even want anybody to tell me what's going on with this person. What's that song? Don't let nobody come bring me no bad news. I don't want no bad news. No. I'm intentional about being happy. You see how happy I am? I'm, this is the day when I get up in the morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't just say that in the morning. I said do out during out the day and finding things to be joyful about I like talking to you right now and do that which i'm supposed to do i'm supposed to do what i'm doing now talk and and lift somebody's spirit Heal somebody's heart. Give somebody a wake-up call. You know, these young people say, stay woke. You ain't lying. But sometimes we go to sleep at the wheel of the, of the car of life. 
And we forget. We've got them enablers. It, we're here because of God's grace and mercy. I don't believe in making God work overtime to save me from myself, Donna Lawrence. That's why I'm asking him, deliver me. That old Les Brown, he's gone, he's dead. If a man is to gain his life, he must lose his life. To common sense, which is not common practice. There's a saying, and I believe in it. Wherever you find yourself, at some point in time, you made an appointment to be there. You know somebody who needs to hear this message. Like this page and share it. Call them, reach them, email them, text them. Say, let's got a message for you. Because all of us are dealing with stuff. And so when you look at the relationships, I got work to do. And I'm not going to let somebody take me out. I'm not going to die a premature death trying to help save somebody who don't want to save themselves. There's a calling on my life. There's a calling on your life. And it's necessary that we wake up. It's necessary to realize wherever we are at some point in time, we made an appointment to be there. It's necessary that we choose peace and peaceful relationships. It's necessary that we set a distance between us and people that are toxic, that are negative, and that are reckless. That's not taking life seriously. Somebody needs to hear this. I believe the calling on my life have a good state of mind, peaceful state of mind. People said, you know, you a natural speaker. Give me a break. Are you kidding me? I'm reminded this guy was riding by a farm and, and the owner of the farm was standing out in the hot burning sun. This guy came by and said, man, God has blessed you with a wonderful crop. And this farmer, he took his hat off and wiped the sweat off his brow, looked around. He said, yeah, but you should have seen it when he had it all to himself. <laughs> I worked at this. And I, I, and, I, and I want to work with people who want to work to build their greatness and whatever that is being an entrepreneur building, building their real estate business, their financial wealth, uh, or building stronger relationships, or just having the mental resolve, being in a community of like-minded people, dreamers who know that life is serious. You here today, gone today. Don't try and do this thing in life by yourself. It adds power to your life. One one goose can fly 75% further in, in formation with other geese than it can fly by itself. You know, have you ever felt that there was something that you are supposed to do and it took you some time to face that and to realize that and to answer that call? That was me for a long time. I... I got compliments from people who would tell me about my voice or they said, you know, if you don't do anything else, you can become a comedian. You funny. You got a funny laugh. Or you, you inspire me. I believe that all of us here, we were born for such a time as this. And I'm clear, the majority of people can't hear me. My voice is not for the majority of people. It's just for those who can hear me in their heart. For those who know 
that there's a higher calling. For those who are in a place in their lives that they want to build the greatness that's lying dormant in them, to impact generations yet unborn, to live a life that will outlive them. That's what Dorothy Bell, my, my mother, who was the motivational speaker, and, and my grandmother, Mueller Rucker. And I believe that you are listening to me now because there is something in you, and that's something that's in me. That's something that attracts you to my voice. Communities, cultures are created by people. And they can be changed by people through a commitment, through all the frustrations, through all the disappointments, through our being an active force for good. That's why I'm training speakers and life coaches and teaching people how to tell their story, people who've gone through some stuff that can say to the masses, what you're going through, you will get through. You don't have to set up camp there. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I believe that we can build communities of greatness around the country. We want our children to be involved because they're watching and they're learning from us. We got to live beyond, oh, ain't it awful. I hope that what I've shared, it caused you to rethink your life. To reflect on your life. Oh boy, we're blessed. We're here because of God's grace and mercy. We're here because somebody made a sacrifice. Somebody refused to give up. Somebody prayed. Somebody took a stand. Somebody said to themselves, no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. Somebody understood the words of James Weldon Johnson, Stony the road we trod, bitter the chestening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died, yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed. We've come over a way that with tears have been watered. We've come treading a path through the blood of the slaughtered. Mm. This thing called life, this thing called life, protect your mind. Guard your heart and stay focused on doing what you can, where you are, with what you have, and never be satisfied. And don't define what the possibilities are for you being focused on the obstacles. No. Don't allow a negative conversation to stop you. No, you don't know enough about yourself to be a cynic. Athea, I love you. I'm coming to the UK. I said, I want to go travel. I got to come to UK. If I don't do anything else, we got to do something over there. And, and any, oh my goodness. So I want to leave this with you. Choose to be uncommon. I love these words. I choose not to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek 
opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment. Mm, I, I don't want to be common. Average is over. I want to live my life, live my purpose, and become so good at what I do, the calling on my life that I can't be ignored and be able to live a life in 2022 that allow me to touch you. I've enjoyed talking to you. And what I just said, don't make someone a priority who's made you an option. Mm. Oh, behave. Hello. Bye for now.